proteins were named one and a half centuries ago after the late Greek word proteios, which means of primary importance. The name is well deserved because proteins are capable of accomplishing truly amazing things in our body. No wonder that for many people, proteins are the king of nutrients. But this idea of primacy has also created some die-hard misconceptions that still lay at the back of the mind of many consumers. And I'd like to start our discussion of proteins by pointing out three of these common misconceptions. The first one is that protein is the good stuff, sort of the reason why you eat, what you really should be looking for in food, to grow and stay strong. This idea dates back to the origins of the science of nutrition in the 19th century, when many scientists indeed believed that the reason we need to eat is to get proteins. But at this point in the course, you already know better. You know, for example, that carbs and fats are equally as important. We cannot survive without the essential fatty acids. We need many vitamins and minerals. Without fiber and other non-nutrient bioactives, our health would be suboptimal. Proteins are of primary importance, but they are not the only important thing. Another common idea is that protein is animal, meaning that animal food is the only source of highly quality bioavailable proteins. Animal food is indeed an excellent source of protein, but it's not the only one. We can get all the proteins we need also from vegetable food, which is the reason why so many people can perfectly thrive on vegan diets without any problem of protein deficiency. The last misconception is that protein makes muscle. Well, protein does not. Exercise makes muscle. We do need a little bit more protein to sustain muscle growth, but protein by itself does not have any anabolizing effect. It does not stimulate muscle growth. Just like we need bricks to build a new house, but if we just throw there a bunch of bricks and do nothing else, we are not building anything. If we eat more proteins and do nothing else, our body will just take those extra proteins, convert them to fat, and store them into our adipose tissue, which will make us fat and certainly not athletic. So now that we have clarified what's false about proteins, let's move on and see what's true. Proteins are the molecules through which the cells in our body are able to express the genetic information contained in our DNA. DNA is the blueprint of life. It contains all the instructions to build our entire body and to make it work smoothly. But DNA only provides the instructions. What executes these instructions is proteins. By synthesizing proteins, our body is able to translate the coded information contained in our DNA into actual working material to accomplish structural and regulatory roles. Proteins are the main structural material in our body. Almost 20% of our body weight is accounted for by proteins. Our muscles, our bones, our skin, all of our organs, our hair, our nails. Protein is the stuff all these things are made of. But there's much more than that. Proteins also have countless regulatory functions in our body. All the enzymes, carriers, transporters, many hormones, signaling molecules, antibodies, all these regulatory molecules in our body are proteins. We need them to fight off infections, to contract our muscles, to digest and metabolize what we eat, to detoxify toxic substances, and hundreds of other things. Proteins are vital to virtually all of our metabolic processes. They not only give us structure, but they also make all of these structures work. And then, proteins can also be used for energy. We already know that they provide about 4 kilocalories per gram, just like carbs. However, using proteins for energy is kind of a waste, because they can be used for much more noble structural and regulatory purposes. As we will learn, our body does not really like to use proteins for energy, and unless it's strictly necessary, it will spare them for other, more important structural and regulatory uses.